So we're experiencing this weird phenomenon here in London, something that we don't often get. It's called sunlight. Clearly, I've forgotten how to deal with this. Should I? But that's that's just weird. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Okay, I think we're just going to have to go glasses off. So I'm going to tell you about the few books that I managed to finish in May. May was such a mixed bag of a month. I had some of the best times ever and also it was it was a month that was really hard. So I didn't read much. However, what when I did read, I usually binged books. So overall, the wrap up is actually not too bad um, because I did read a few things that I really loved, but I just missed sitting down and reading a lot. So this June, because it's my birthday, I actually have a few days off. So I have been making more time to sit down and read for like an hour of uninterrupted reading, which has been great already. And because it's Pride Month, I'm reading queer books. I really, really want to make a video recommending at least the trans books that I've read and also like a TBR of sorts. So if I get the time to do that, I'll do that. I'm trying to do this thing where I don't edit as much, which is funny because this will come right after a cut. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit less particular because when I edit, I usually take away every part where like I breathe too loudly or I say um too much. I leave some of them in because I still want this to feel like a conversation. But yeah, it's a whole thing. So I'm trying to be more casual because last video I did that and it was so much quicker to edit and I want to keep doing that because I've been getting back into booktube, I've been getting back to watching booktube videos and trying to leave comments and I just have so many ideas and yeah, it it will be great. Um, I have some backlog books and then I hope to at some point go back to the book club. So let's talk about the books. Um, First books that I don't have a physical copy of. Sandy Hook, An American Tragedy and the Battle for Truth by Elizabeth Williamson. I read this for um, the Booktube Prize and it was really good. It was better than I expected. I am not going to lie, I was a bit jaded at the idea of having to read more on mass shootings and terrible tragedies after having to read the George Floyd book, which was also really good, but quite daunting. However, this book was really good because like the George Floyd book, took this one terrible instance that really marked a change in the way, in the social conversation surrounding this issue, in this case, of course, mass shootings in schools, and used it as a starting point to talk about conspiracy theorists and the fight for truth and misinformation in the uh, internet age and so it was really well done. I will make a book to prize video just sort of sharing thoughts, talking about my process. I think making individual wrap-ups for the rounds doesn't make a lot of sense anymore but I do want to like participate in the conversation so hopefully that'll be up early July and I didn't sign up for the semi-finals but I think I'm going to try and sign up for the finals if they still need judges. The next one is Death in Her Hands by Odesha Moshfeg. I did read a physical copy of this, however, it was borrowed and I sort of picked it up at random while I was at my partner's apartment and they have, of course, a lot of books. And I was like, oh, let's just pick something that I can sort of finish right away. And I almost finished this that same day, but I had to take it home. It took me one or two more days, but then I finished it. This was so good. I think it might be my favorite Moshfeg, which is interesting because I know a lot of people don't like it. Basically, this is about a woman who is a bit of a recluse. Not a bit, she's a big recluse. She lives by herself with her dog in like a secluded cabin um, adjacent to a really small town. One day she's 
walking in the woods and she finds this note that says this is her dead body i didn't kill her but there's there's no body so she starts trying to investigate and a lot of people feel really disappointed because they feel like the mystery is never really resolved and that it's a bad detective novel i just think it's brilliant it really reminded me it's like a grimmer non-satirical version of the faster I walk the smaller I am which is another sort of recluse older woman paranoid sort of her imagination running loose and death in her hands like all the layers um are fantastic the way sort of she gets more and more in her head I really enjoyed it's like with Eileen you see her the inner workings of her mind uh, but it also allows you to see how these might be completely made up these situations there is enough interaction with other characters where you understand that oh maybe she's misconstruing everything and that is brilliant so i really really enjoyed it i still don't think I'm obsessed with the writing. I think, for example, Eileen, I really loved because it, I listened to it as an audiobook and the narrator was fantastic. And with this one, I really loved reading it and I actually would like to reread it, but it does feel like an elongated short story of sorts, but I didn't mind that. So I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it made me want to pick up La Bona, but I because or maybe try again with my year of rest and relaxation the problem is that by definition my year of rest and relaxation is kind of the opposite from Eileen and death in her hands which are these hyper intense super anxious and over analytical protagonists that are also quite old and secluded um I did start my year on rest and relaxation and I DNF'd it because yeah the protagonist there is young in the middle of things and completely detached and decides to sort of extricate herself whereas these other two characters have been extricating themselves but want in. Then we have Daddy Boy by Emerson Whitney and this is a memoir that is going to be published in the UK by Cypher Press, but it was originally published in the US. And at first I didn't understand that it was a memoir just because it has this very surreal, just ethereal, fragmentary nature kind of thing, um, narrative. And I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, it pulled me all the way through all the time. It's about this trans guy who signs up for a storm chaser program. And the program is kind of a bust. And in the meantime, he's reflecting upon growing up and his family situation and his family relationship now with his stepdad in particular and sort of growing up being excluded from masculinity but then also having, I think, two brothers and like with his stepdad and sort of whether he is or isn't included in that masculinity framework. And then he's also thinking about his uh, life with his wife. I think they do get married, but he's now getting divorced, who was an older woman who is also a dominatrix. And more specifically, they lived an s and M lifestyle so he was her sub the reason he feels their relationship went sour was because he started to want things and to want more agency and to become an independent more in charge of his own life that all was fascinating and you think there's a lot going on and there is but it's that sort of Maggie Nelson school of paragraph writing that also engages with a lot of other literature and it's very wise and introspective with these sublime moments of writing about the weather so if you like nature writing and you also love memoirs and you know all of these ideas of masculinity and s and m live and yeah there's a lot going on but it all comes together beautifully so i really really recommend it i really really loved it and i would read anything that emerson Whitney ever publishes because 
again, I just really, really liked his prose. Yeah, and I think those are the books that I don't have physical copies of. So let's move to this tiny little um, graphic novel slash one of comic book. Structurally, is more comic book. Murder Ballads by Gabe Soria, Paul Rainwand, and Chris Hunt. I got this secondhand at this lovely new-ish book barge in Leeds. I had been to Leeds before, and I had hit all of the bookshops, but this one uh, opened, I think, last November, I was told by the owner, who is this absolutely lovely woman. And the selection there is great. It's small, but bigger than it seems. And the curation is... And it has an actually really great selection of secondhand titles. This one was actually really cheap. I'm so glad I picked it up because I read it on the same day. It's about this guy who is obsessed with soul music and his marriage is going through a crisis because he lost all the money trying to make these records that no one wanted to listen to and then he discovers a brother brother duo at a bar and he's like this is the best thing i've ever heard and then he embarks on this odyssey to produce this record and it is sort of a classic tragic noir it is so simple and straightforward yet the commentary on race is quite fascinating and just the mood the vibe the pacing of it the art really complements the story well so while it is not life-changing I will revisit this because it was just a fun time. And it says it has an accompanying soundtrack, but of course um, the code was missing because this is secondhand. But I think I can give it a Google, a Spotify search and I might find it. So I definitely want to check that out. It just was a solid read. Uh, another graphic work this time, much sweeter. I love this part by Tilly Walden. This is not my first Tilly Walden, I was about to say my first, but I think it's my first fiction because I read her graphic memoir spinning all about her time in figure skating, which was fascinating, I really recommend it. Um, this is about two best friends who begin a relationship, but then for some reasons it doesn't necessarily work out and will they find their way back to each other we don't know but it's just very it has such a strong sense of place it's very architectural the use of color is fascinating and it just reflects the stages of young love so well this is why i love this part is because they listen to music so they like the music but also this part as you know the moment where you start falling in love and it's wonderful i really recommend it if you want something sweet but not saccharine something that's really well done uh, quite delicate. I, I just really, really enjoyed it. Yes, it's short, but it's worth your while. Then I have a proof copy here of La Kiriboto by Ayodel Olofintuare, and I am sure I didn't pronounce that very well. I'm sorry. I will learn to do it better. Basically, I've been working as an intern for Cypher Press for a month now, and if you don't know, Cypher Press is an amazing small independent queer publisher that publishes a lot of experimental but still sort of gripping and kind of genre leaning fiction and some non-fiction so for example they publish Alison Rumford who wrote Tell Me I'm Worthless but they also publish Juliet Jake's um, journalism collection so there are lots of things going on. Also Limbic, which is a poetry collection. So this was originally published as the Lucky Roboto Chronicles in Nigeria. And again, it's coming out in the UK. I should know this soon, very soon, um, in June. I've been looking at release dates all day yesterday. So it's insane that I it's not more firmly cemented in my mind. Anyways, this is described as a queer feminist revenge thriller like no other. And it is. It is about four women who find themselves in the same family ruled by an evil patriarch and there is a heist element involved, there is queerness of course, there are ideas of gender nonconformity and what that means in society specifically and there is also this idea of sisterhood and solidarity and both the limits but also the expansiveness of that. It's also plain fun to read and it is written not just the dialogue itself but the paragraphs and the constructions 
at its core it's an English that is not trying to be standard it takes you into Lagos and uses the rhythm of their English to grab you in and to take you into this wild narrative so I really recommend it if you are into more PC books if you like action stuff like action films or like heisty films if you want something that will keep moving but also has some sort of introspection there's a lot of character development at the beginning so I definitely think it's a book of two halves in that respect the beginning is much more introspective whereas the second half is just action and go and these people making something of themselves in spite of their odds so it's really good highly recommend final book i'm going to talk about is acts of desperation by megan nolan i didn't pick this up for years until a colleague said it was really good and then i want to see megan nolan read from her second book and it sounds just as good the thing is if you see how this is packaged and even the sort of blurbs here and the people they chose to put here, like Marion Keyes and David Nichols, it makes it sound like this is going to be a romance book. Because it is about a relationship. It's about this young woman at uni who meets the most beautiful man she's ever seen and then begins a toxic, toxic relationship with him. But she's writing from Greece in 2019, I think, and she's reflecting back on this relationship that started in 2012 so there's been some time so it goes back and forth between being more immersive and sort of more traditional narrative and then a present sort of more analytical critical looking self-reflecting sort of uh, passages and it's great uh it broke my heart it i devoured it i couldn't and didn't want to stop reading it's just so intense the raw honesty of it is so painful like she goes to these really pathetic places and she's unapologetic about it but like in a good way it's not that like she's making excuses but she's saying hey you can't judge me this is how it was and we are not perfect and you are not perfect so just take it um it's also set in dublin which was really fun to see i love dublin a lot so some of the reference points although i haven't spent that much time there i still god and could feel that sort of sense of place uh but yeah this left a really bitter taste in my mouth but in a good way like this is what this book wanted to be and was she definitely explores all the different ways in which people can hurt each other and make each other miserable i've told a lot of people about this book i think if you go by the cover and sort of what it suggests you will be really disappointed actually because it's not what it is it does say it's like a bad relationship but i don't think it does justice to sort of the literariness of it and the depths of it. it i think it does try to make it seem sexier and fluffier and it does have sex in it and it is sexy at times but it's actually quite disgusting as well but again all of these negative things in a great way because Megan Nolan is in control, the craft is there, her writing is beautiful and uh, I just can't wait for her next book. This one was so good and I'll be looking forward to anything she puts out in the future. Her newest is going to be released I think in July, I'm not exactly sure but yeah it's coming up soon. But in the meantime pick up Acts of Expiration if this sounds like your cup of tea because it's excellent and that was all i gotta bounce now i'm going to the Hastings square festival let me know if you've read any of these books let me know if you want to read them after hearing me talk about them or just because you've seen them somewhere else also let me know what you've been reading and especially are you reading anything for pride month always keen to know that and that's it any and all comments can go down below see you next time ah! Oh my god, I forgot the name. Oh no, because it isn't their name. Um, I or maybe she did have her name. Anyways, allergies are kicking my. <clears throat> Sorry, allergies are kicking my ass this year. Um. Okay, what else do we have? Daddy Boy by Emerson Whitney. This I. Have that is. Hey, this is bothering me a lot.
Let's keep going.